Hi everyone. I am back and I have a dog with me. Alright, Tara. Alright, girl. Pick up the camera. Pick up the camera. Alright. Alright, everyone. Take a chance to boop the snoot. Tara's looking directly at the camera, so feel free to like literally touch your computer screen and touch her snoot. <gasps> boop. Whoop. Boop. <laughs> Whoop. Boop. She is looking up at the treat that I'm holding. Right here. This is a freeze-dried, like, fish-based treat. All right, girl. All right, Tara. High five. Oh, what a good girl. That was, that was, you gotta stay on the ground. Keep your butt on the ground. All right, high five. Good girl, there you go. That treat is from Copperwing. Thank you, Copperwing, for giving Tara a treat. She very much appreciates it. And thank you for giving everyone the opportunity to boop Tara's snoot. <laughs> I was like, Dad, give me the dang treat! Yes, it's true. She's very, very patient. She's very, very patient with me just then, so... Oh, look how good this girl is. This girl is the best girl. She's such a good doggo. Alright. So we have... One more. I'm just gonna click through this. One more story to go through, and then we will call it good for today. Branya is our next one. Oh, she seems to be, she seems like she's probably a Jade Blood, so I actually wonder if uh, we're gonna go to the colony of Jade Bloods that Skylar referenced at the end of uh, that story. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, country girl, actually. <laughs> I really need that hydrate. Oh, and also thank you for the hydrate, McCatnip. Two hydrates, yay! Tara's also hydrating, actually. She went over to the cat's water bowl, which is in this room, and she's hydrating. All right. Back to back to Vivi being a king on, on pet cam. All righty. <clears throat> Branya means armor in Russian. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I did not know that. But that's a little different, though. That's fair. All right. You've been traveling through a cave network for a while now, because of course we have. The Rigid Stone is a, welcome is a welcome respite from the eerily organic infrastructure you've been encountering, but it is also proving an unwelcome respite from friend-making. Maybe it was too much to hope for that this cavern would be home to another potential new buddy. Maybe leaving the big city behind was a horrible mistake. Just maybe these dark, cold tunnels are completely devoid of- Oh, hang on, there's a bunch of buildings in the distance. <laughs> oh, hello. I thought you were one of my girls, but you don't look like a jade blood. Or anything else, actually. How strange. <laughs> An armored bear? <laughs> oh, goodness. Our country girl's kitty is sleeping on his pillow. Oh, that's adorable. You convey your usual spiel regarding your circumstances. You're lost and lonely and your ribs are still broken, you think? Honestly, the ribs are fine. You could just use another friend or two. <laughs> I see. Well, my first responsibility is to my jades and the mother grub, so I can't make any promises of friendship just yet. But you do look like you need someone to take care of you. Oh, Branya's kind of like a Kanaya type. I'm guessing. Actually, yeah, they, they both end with the ya yeah syllable, so... <laughs> Probably a mama bear pun. <laughs> nice. She is like a mama bear, it's true. Here in the brooding caverns, we follow a few simple rules. One, don't invite drama from up top be down below. Two, protect the mother grub. Three, we have no hierarchy, but do what I say. Let's do everything we can to keep up our current record of dozens of sweeps without any jades being culled. You're not sure what half of those words mean, but you nod your head. <laughs> Good, I'll take you to our hive. Follow me! You follow her into her hive, which looks like a school or some kind of dormitory with multiple rooms and multiple floors. Usually more of my jades are around. I suppose that everyone is out watching the Imperial drones arrive with the filial pails. Girls, we have a visitor to our caverns! One, do not be alarmed by their bizarre appearance. They seem to be harmless and quite weak. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Two, do not give them more injuries than they already have. Oh, good. It's nice to know we have a maximum number of injuries that they're allowed to give us. 
Our visitor deserves a warm jade blood welcome. She claps her hands. No one else is around, but you stand to attention and give her the thumbs up to show that you read her loud and clear. <coughs> Excuse me. Imagine little motor noises. Imagine little motor noises with with the uh, the oh the V things. Like it ramps up a little when she talks, and then it ramps down. Oh, okay. You notice that she called you visitor and not friend, but that's okay. You can do whatever it takes until you're upgraded from visitor to friend, or at least charity case. You follow her upstairs and she stops at a big room on the second floor. When you step into it, you have to clap you have to clap your hand over your mouth to keep from gagging at the revolting sight. <laughs> oh my goodness. There are big baby-sized larvae looking things all over the floor, squirming around and crying and inchworming out of kiddie pools of green slime. What the hell? This is our nursery. Most of the wigglers are sick or injured, so we look after them in here until they're well enough to go back out to the caverns and spin their cocoons. She looks shifty all of a sudden, giving you some side eye like she's sizing you up. You try to look very non-threatening and also 100% trustworthy. We keep this nursery on the down low. It's not against any laws, but it's something of a break with tradition to save any of the grubs instead of just letting them die. Tell you the truth, I'm not sure why we do it. I guess it just feels right to me to take care of them, the same way I take care of my jades. <laughs> oh no, well, just lost my appetite. Sorry, country girl. A nursery, huh? You look around again with this new information. You guess you can sort of see how the Wigglers look like babies. You can't believe that one of these things could grow up into anything that looks like Branya, but this is an alien planet, so who knows? Oh wait, was this song actually this song actually was used in Homestuck Reaver Recursive? What uh what is the name of the track? And where in Homestuck is it used? Because I am curious. She takes you over to a shelf that seems to hold medical supplies. You're not sure what can be done for your broken ribs, but maybe she has some kind of alien technology that can help. But when she starts going through the cabinet, you don't see anything that looks high-tech like the thing that fixed your arm. <clears throat> uh, I guess that most of what we have is stuff for the Wigglers, and I'm not familiar enough with your bizarre anatomy to know if it will help. But if you're not, if you're not completely sure how to do something, it's best to try anyway. One, even if you fail, everything, everyone else can still learn from your mistake. Two, maybe you won't fail. You never know. You're not so sure about applying this ethos to your broken ribs, but she looks so determined, it might be rude to say no. All right, let's save. So here's our first decision point. So we can say, go for it. My ribs are already broken, so where's the harm? Or thanks, but no thanks. I'll heal on my own just fine. Um. Let's go with, uh, thanks but no thanks. Oh, well, if you're sure. I'm worried about you, though. You seem like you need help, and I wish I could help you more. Oh, it's called Phantasmagoric Waltz by Alex Rossetti, and it was used in Rose and Dave Shut Up and Jam. Replacing a removed track? Ah, I see. If I can't take care of someone, I'm not sure how we can ever truly be friends. You try to cheer her up, pointing out that friendship is a two-way street, after all. She doesn't have to concern herself with your mutilated frame. How can you help her instead? Well, sure, there are things around here that I could use some assistance with. However, don't take this the wrong way, but we've only just met. I don't know that I can trust you to be as responsible as I am. It's not easy to be the one in charge. You have to be one, conscientious, two, considerate, and three, competent at all times. You try to think of the times in your life when you've been conscientious, considerate, or competent. You're drawing a bit of a blank. But hey, new planet, new you. You assure her that you have what it takes. I guess if you want to prove that you can be responsible, I can let you help me out today. It's a good time for a visit to the Mother Grub. You're careful to step around all the little guys on the floor as you head out of the nursery. She takes you back outside, and these caverns are even bigger than you first realized. They're also dark, and cold, and gloomy, and you can't see anywhere that might lead up to the planet's surface. 
Does she really just live down here all the time? To make some conversation during this cold hike in a damp cave, you mentioned that living underground like this whoops, seems kind of depressing. You realize too late that this wasn't very tactful, but she doesn't get angry at your conversational gambit of insulting her home. <laughs> oh no, it's very peaceful down here. Well, in comparison to anywhere else. I quite enjoy it. The brooding caverns are a place for life and birth, not death. That's pretty uncommon on Alternia. You're still not sure what she means by brooding caverns, but you guess it has something to do with the wigglers in her nursery. Before you can ask, you reach the top of a ridge and get a new, wider view of the rest of this cavern. It's enormous, probably the size of a small city. All over the cave floor, you see more wigglers crawling everywhere. Cocoons line the cave walls and the larger stalactites with some, with some young trolls crawling out of them. Walking, flying, and crawling among the wigglers and young trolls are a variety of white monsters of all kinds of shapes and sizes. In the center of the, center of the cavern, there is... You don't even know how to describe it. It looks kind of like a... It, lo it looks like a huge, many-legged queen bug of some kind with a goat-shaped skull and horns coming out of her head. Her bulbous sphincter ripples as she lays a continuous stream of hundreds of eggs from which you assume the Grey Wigglers will hatch. Bulbous sphincter, that's a phrase that was written here that I read aloud. And marching through all this, you see several hulking bipedal creatures, each carrying two buckets either to or away from the Mother Grub. They look armed. <laughs> they look armed and they have... Uh, sorry. They look armed and they move like regimented troops, soldiers of some kind. You are instinctively terrified of them. This is where the magic happens, and by that I mean the continuation of our species. Jade bloods like myself are entrusted with looking after this process, which is of course a very special job. One, the Imperial drones carry a filial pails of genetic material to the mother grub for her slurry. Two, she lays eggs that hatch new grub broods. Three, after the Wigglers emerge from their cocoons, the new trolls will go, to the tr go through the trials, and the ones that make it will be selected by Eleusis to help care for them. Four, together the young trolls and their Lucy go up to the surface together, where the trolls will grow up, or get culled, or whatever. As Branya explains troll reproduction to you, one of the Imperial drones veers sharply to the left and, in the process, tramples over a few Wigglers and young trolls. The drone continues on, but several of the Lucy cry out, crowding their crowding around their dead or injured charges. One of them, a gigantic beast that resembles a bison, bellows and rears up on its hind legs, hitting one of the other Lucy with its front hoof. Oh geez, not again. This kind of damage control is a lot of what we have to deal with. Whenever a Lucis goes rogue out of grief or confusion, there's the potential for it to lash out at other Lucy, the Wigglers, or the Mother Grub herself. We Jade Buds cannot let that happen! She looks so concerned, a marked contrast to how confident she seemed before now. You offered to help her out earlier, and it seems like now is your chance. Someone has to stop that rogue Lucis, and that someone could be you! Alright, so this is this is the second decision point. I'm actually gonna save it in another slot. Um, and then let's actually before we proceed with this decision point. Go back to the first one. Because we found the correct path clearly, but let's circle back and take the wrong decision from the first decision point. Uh, so she's offering to try and heal us, so let's go with, go for it! My ribs are already broken, so where's the harm? Okay, come here. Lift up your shirt so I can get to your injured billow sack enclosures. Yes, like that. Turn the part that's all bloody and horrifying towards me. <laughs> She has something that looks like some kind of ointment? It's a shade of bright green, similar to the slime beds you see around the nursery. And it also seems to be glowing. Seems like there's nothing wrong about applying it to your skin. But despite your optimism, the second Branya rubs some of it on your broken skin, you feel a searing hot pain, like you just got doused with poison. You flinch back instinctively. Your momentum carries you too far, and as you step back, you trip on something behind your feet. You cartwheel, you cartwheel your arms, but it's no use. You're going down. You're yelling, Timber! 
You feel something soft and squishy break your fall, and you hear a terrible squelching noise and some kind of animal squeal. <laughs> you have fallen right onto one of the wigglers. You roll off of it, but there's no use. It's squished flat, and you're covered in olive fluid that you think might be its blood. Oh no, here comes Mama Bear. She's going to kill you. Oh no. Oh dear. You look up to see the Bra to see Branya's horrified face and know that there is no hope for friendship in those vengeful eyes. You might want to run before I throw you out this window and break the rest of your bones. Game over. Alternia's deadliest ass. Oh no. Oh no. Well, just killed Nepeta. No. No, not dear sweet Nepeta. No. Oh, that's right. Her blood is olive colored. Oh. We did just kill baby Nepeta, didn't we? Oh. We sacrificed another dear sweet Nepeta. Oh no. Alright, so that's the bad ending from the first decision point. Let's go back to our second decision point. Alright, fight the monster, save the day, you've got this, or be a weenie. Um, let's go with fight the monster, save the day, you've got this. The bison lucis seems to be causing quite a ruckus. Other luci have now gotten riled up too, with some of them trying to gather wigglers to keep them out of harm's way, and others just getting hyped to thrash. It seems like it could turn into a monster stampede, and they're close to the Mother Grub's big, soft, vulnerable abdomen. Not great! Fighting a monster single-handed seems like a daunting first step in a friendship, but you did tell her you could be responsible. You square your shoulders and tell Branya that she has nothing to worry about. You're going to stop that looseness, calm down all the other Luci, and protect the Mother Grub! All without breaking a sweat, and hopefully without breaking any more bones either. Whoa there, I was going to suggest that I go after it while you stay here. You seem kind of weak and fragile, even apart from your injuries, I mean. I don't want you to get hurt worse, and I'm not sure I trust anyone other than myself to take the lead on this. That wasn't quite the reaction you were hoping for. Normally, you would be all about sitting back and letting her protect you, because, well, protective and responsible is a good look on her. But desperate times call for desperate measures and you don't know how else you're going to prove yourself worthy to be her friend. You do your best to project an air of confidence, or at least competence. You assure her that this is no sweat for you. You take down Raging Bison back on your home planet all the time. You're known for it, actually. <laughs> well, if you say that this isn't your first ungulate rope and gallop exhibition, I'll believe you. <laughs> That's a fancy way of saying that this isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> I'll hang back and let you give it a shot. But if it gets too overwhelming in there, I'm right here. One, caring for the Mother Grub is my responsibility as a Jade Blood. Two, I'd never abandon a friend to deal with a mess on their own. If we end up being- if we end up being friends, that is. Oh, hell yes! Now you have a reason to hope! You approach the rampaging bison with caution. Do all bison have horns like that? Maybe they do. You're no bison expert. But you're pretty sure they don't all have teeth that nasty. <laughs> Oh my gosh, boop it, yes. Boop it on the snoot to establish dominance. <laughs> Bison on Earth mostly eat grass, don't they? This guy doesn't look like an herbivore. <laughs> At first you try to calm the Lucis down by talking to it, but your soothing words have no effect. In fact, you might have just made it even angrier by suggesting that it pause and take some deep breaths in reaction to its trampled charge. Oh, we didn't boop Lady Snoot. Oh no, that's true. We, we didn't boop Lady Snoot. We'll have to go back on the VOD and boop it later. Asynchronously. You're not even sure it can understand human speech, come to think of it. <laughs> you circle around it, wishing you had some kind of lasso or something. Maybe you can herd it away from the Mother Grub. You look around to see if any of these other Luci look vaguely like Earth Shepherd Dogs, but no dice. <laughs> You hesitate too long and the Lucis turns away, its furious eyes falling on the Mother Grub. It stamps its hooves, snorts air out of its nostrils, and screams in a way that sounds a lot more hellish than you imagine normal bison are capable of. It's obviously about to charge, and you can only think of one thing to do. 
In desperation, you leap forward and tackle it football style, doing everything you can with your flimsy human body to drag it onto its side. <laughs> You're dying again, I'm calling it. Perhaps, Copper, perhaps. It half works. You plow into the looses and stop it in its tracks, but it topples over onto a nest of wigglers taking you down with it. Wigglers and young trolls go bouncing everywhere, squealing in distress, and their loose eye descend upon you in a rage! Everything is chaos for a while! You are trapped beneath the bison looses, which is very worrying for all your body parts, and you think you might feel something important rupturing inside you. <laughs> but hey, on the bright side, this crushing mass is protecting you from all the other pissed off loose eye trying to attack you. Just as your whole breathing situation is starting to get dicey, you hear a commotion in what sounds possibly the tra you hear a commotion, and what sounds possibly the trouncing of some similar of a small- Wait, hold on. I'm not reading this correctly. Just as your whole breathing situation is starting to get dicey, you hear a commotion, and what sounds possibly the trouncing of some of the smaller luci that were trying to get to you. A crowd of beasts around you scatters, and then you hear her! Oof, I'm having a hard time getting this thing off of you, and he's still very angry and he keeps trying to kick me. Where's a bronze blood when you need one? Like, like Skyla, for example? You don't know what that means, but you're very grateful that she's here to help you. You try to communicate this, but it all comes garbled from all the blood in your mouth. <laughs> a bison phallus rod, perhaps? Oh my gosh. Club's deuce would love this one. Oh my goodness. It reminds me of a certain cane. <laughs> Maybe don't try to speak, or move, or help. You experience a sinking feeling that could be related to your diminishing odds of impressing Branya and becoming her friend, or it could be the compression of all your internal organs. Either way, it's tough to feel optimistic right now. But before you can give in to complete despair, you hear other voices. Your view is blocked by the mass of bison flesh on top of you, but could it be? Are these other people here to save you? Finally, I was wondering where you had all gotten off to. Let's all work together, girls! One, you two grab his horns to keep the head still and keep it from biting anyone. Two, the rest of you come around with me to its backside so we can push it in without getting kicked. You hear some grunting and muttering, and the bison starts making noises that sound more confused and less furious. The pressure and pain on your chest briefly spike in intensity as the thing's weight shifts, and then they must succeed in dragging it off of you because you can suddenly breathe again! But the crisis is not yet over. While you are still testing the use of your lungs and blanking up at the cavern ceiling, you hear a new cacophony of enraged monster noises. Uh-oh, the other Lucy are still agitated. Get down there and try to calm them down. Protect the mother grub. You try to lift yourself to see what's going on, but putting any weight on your arms makes you feel like maybe all your bones got turned into confetti. Painful, painful confetti. Hey, Borean, happy, happy Saturday. We're doing Branya right now, Borean, which, if we rearrange the letters in your screen name, you can spell Branya. I just realized. <laughs> hey, Seth, happy Saturday. You feel strong hands propping you up gently, and now your head is in Branya's lap. You try to focus more on how this is a nice place for your head to be, and less on the pain. This is not good. I don't know if my jades can reach the stampede in time, and the mother grub could, grub could get injured. Not to mention all these wigglers are in danger. No. You didn't think the situation could get any worse. But now you see that several of the Imperial drones that had been about to leave the cavern are turning back, drawn by all the noise and chaos. But maybe this could be a good thing? Maybe they could instill some order? Who is Branya? This is Branya. We're looking at Branya right now, Borean. Fuck! They're going to kill everyone! She scrambles to her feet, in the process letting your head whack down on the cave floor. Your vision swims, but you can still make out the drones firing indiscriminately. At the Luci, at the Grubs and Wigglers, and at the Jade Bloods. One laser beam skims the side of the Mother Grub's massive midsection, and her scream is so loud that the ceiling shakes and a few stalactites shake loose falling on drones and luci and wigglers alike. It's a total catastrophe. A whole rainbow's worth of troll, wiggler, and luci's blood is splattering the cavern walls. Branya seems paralyzed by the chaos, looking from her jades to the mother grub to the imperiled wigglers like she's not sure who to help first. 
I can't believe it! This is the worst disaster we've ever had down here! And all because I thought I could sit back and let someone else be responsible for once. If I were a less secure person, I could let this moment plant a seed of self-doubt in my mind about my ability to take care of others and do my job well. Or I could chalk it up to you being really fucking stupid. You shrink under the weight of her glare. She's green in the face from how angry she is. You swallow and manage to spit out enough blood to ask a question that you know is hopeless. Does this mean you can't be friends? Are you serious right now? I do not make friends with anyone who recklessly endangers the trolls and camp and wigglers under my care. Game over! You killed them all! Oh no! What have we done? Oh, why did we try to help? Why did we try to help and kill everyone? Why? Why? I know, Steiner. Why did we try to help and kill everyone? Alright, well, there's one more ending to get, and this will be the ending where everything turns out well. <laughs> Alright, so instead of offering to help, we should be a weenie. You definitely do not like the idea of wading into a monster fight, not even to save the progenitor of your new friend's species. In fact, you don't like that Branya is so focused on protecting all these helpless toddlers and distressed animals instead of taking care of you. You stammer out that you don't think you could take on any kind of monster right now. In fact, you just felt another stab of pain in your ribs. You might be blacking out. Branya's concerned face turns in your direction as you start to swoon. She catches you before you hit the ground, and your heart flutters. You look up at her serious face, and she looks like such a mom, but also such a friend. Like some sort of combination of these two concepts. Oh, she's like our mom friend. Yikes, you don't look so good. I can't leave you alone, not when you're in such not when you're in such bad shape. Hmm. Maybe I could carry you on my back while I try to stop the rampaging Lucis? Your heart flutters. Your heart flutters, turn to print pit blah 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 blah. Hang on, I need to drink water before I try to start talking. Blah. Pip over my own tongue sometimes. Your heart your heart flutters, turn to pinpricks of alarm. That sounds dangerous. Mainly for you. You try to think of what you can say to dissuade her. Something other than, I think you should ignore the helpless babies and mother in danger behind you in favor of continuing to hold me in your strong arms. But before you can speak, you hear a commotion behind her. She turns to look over her shoulder, and her face sags with relief. Yes, the other jades are here. They should know what to do. We've taken care of crises like this before. Of course, usually I'm there to help. If you crane your neck, you can just glimpse a crowd of trolls corralling the rogue Lucis away from the mother grub, while other trolls calm the remaining Luci and swoop up any wigglers in harm's way. Well, it looks like I needn't have worried. They're more than capable of stepping in when I'm otherwise occupied. I'm so proud! You take this opportunity to compliment her on what a good leader she must be, to have trained the others so well. Super smooth! She beams at you and sets you down carefully on the cavern floor, kneeling at your side. This could have gone quite badly. I'm glad I didn't make the wrong choice when I stayed to help you instead of rushing off. It just goes to show, sometimes the best thing you can do for the group is take care of the weakest person in it. You kind of want to object to being called the weakest person, but you did just fake a fainting spell for attention, so maybe now isn't the best time. Instead, you thank her sincerely for sticking by your side. The two of you watch together as order is gradually restored to the chaos below, and even with your injuries, you feel close to content and quite hopeful about how this relationship is progressing. You notice that at your side, several wigglers are blindly squirming around, confused, crying. There are some young trolls here too, looking, all, looking around all lost and bereft. You're not sure if their Luci ran off with the others that got involved in the fracas, or if these little guys are just orphans now. Now that you're seeing them out in the natural cavern light, the Wigglers look less like maggots to you. In fact, they're even kind of cute. You can see why Branya would want to take care of them. One of the smallest Wigglers closest to you has somehow flipped himself over onto his back and seems unable to right himself, his little legs waving in the air while he cries. Oh, poor Wiggler. 
Trying to be careful with your ribs, you reach out to scoop him up and cradle him to your chest, rocking him back and forth until his cries quiet down. No. Wow, you have a very strong nurturing instinct. I think he likes you. You almost look like you could be his Lucis, or a Jade Blood. You are pleased that she approves of your caretaking display. The Wiggler's cough breaks through your haze of smug satisfaction, and when you look down, you realize he seems to seems to be having some trouble breathing. You point this out to Branya. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying! That's right. Oh, good observation. You really are a natural at taking care of other creatures, aren't you? Some people find that nurturing ability to be very attractive and a potential friend. But as for the Wiggler, this is definitely not a good sign. I'm surprised none of these drones have noticed that he's sick. If we leave him here, he'll be culled for sure. Branya takes the Wiggler from you, and you're more than happy to hand him hand him over, considering that you have no idea what to do with a sick baby that's not your species. Also, your broken ribs make holding a baby kind of painful, and Branya holds the Wiggler carefully, but with perfect ease. Just like you hope she'll cradle your new friendship in its infancy. <laughs> Once Branya feels assured that her JTEFs have the situation at the Brooding Caverns under control, you both take the Wiggler back to the Jade Blood Nursery. You hover around uselessly while Branya sets up some kind of crib filled with green slime. You're a little concerned that you're a little concerned when she takes the Wiggler and submerges him under the slime because, like, he was already having trouble breathing. Surely drowning in slime won't help. The Sopor should strengthen his bellow sacs and soothe his sorrow shoot. When he gets healthy again, I'll take him back to the cavern and set him free to make his cocoon and pupate. But he's so small, it's unlikely that he'll survive the trials or be selected by Eleusis. You hate to see Branya looking sad. You try to be sympathetic, mentioning your astute observation that this whole system set, uh, set up with the Wigglers and the trials and the culling seems pretty brutal. What? Oh no, I would never suggest... This is just the way the world works, and it's fine. It's fine. The trials are how young trolls prove that they're strong enough to survive. It's only right for the weak to be culled. It's the purpose of Jade Bloods to ensure the continuation of our species, and consequently the Hemo Spectrum. One, we are not revolutionaries. Two, we're meant to do our jobs and keep our heads down and keep things running smoothly. Three, I would never presume to question the basic tenets of Alternian society. That would bring negative attention from the High Bloods, and I just want to keep my Jade safe. You look around at the nursery, and all these injured or underdeveloped wigglers that Branya was apparently supposed to let die. You think it might not be true that she doesn't question the way her world works. She's looking at you like she's scared you'll call her on it and expose her altruistic tendencies. You try to salvage this conversation thread. Did you say that calling wigglers sounded brutal? You meant neutral. <laughs> oh, thanks, Borean. Yeah, I'll, uh, we will do a video reaction at the end of this. Thank you for, uh, for doing that, for redeeming that. Yes, you feel 100% 100% neutral on this topic. Neither committed to the culling side of things, nor eager to take up arms in revolution. Ah, uh, yes. Neutral is how I feel about it as well. What a good word to describe exactly how I feel about all controversial political subjects. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did I mention that keeping this nursery isn't technically illegal? Because it isn't. Technically. <laughs> there is no reason for any of Triss's drones to come investigating our hive. And if any drones do come knocking, we have nothing to hide. No borderline revolutionary ideas will be tolerated within these walls. Branya laughs nervously and looks around the room like she's making sure that any Imperial drones hiding in here have heard her announcement. You feel bad for how nervous she is. You didn't mean to freak her out. You tell her that she sounds super convincing. And why shouldn't she? Because she's clearly telling the truth. If you were an Imperial Drone, you would definitely be satisfied right now with her clearly law-abiding and neutral ways. Thank you, that means a lot. You cast about for something to change the subject, and mention that your ribs are feeling a bit better. Branya's face brightens, and she lifts up your arms gently so she can touch the injured part of her torso, examining it in her typically responsible and authoritative way. You shiver and wonder if her touch has healing properties. I'm glad to hear that. After all, I don't like it when my friends suffer. Her heart leaps. You look up, scarcely allowing yourself to hope. Could it be? Or was she just making a general statement? If you're not in any more pain, hopefully that means your injuries will heal soon. I'll take care of you until then, my friend. 
You are overcome. Your eyes fill with tears. Branya smiles at you and squeezes your hand. Hey, Toto Stuck, happy Saturday. Victory! Self-care comes first. Aw. We made friends with Branya. Oh, and look at all these little wigglers down here. There's another, there's another baby Nepeta. And there's like some other babies over here. Yay! Alright, and that was Branya's story. Huzzah!